Six months ago, Joel and I set out on the trail of Gary Glitter, Britain's best-known sex offender. We wanted to find out what had happened to the disgraced pop star since he'd fled the UK, and what this said about our attitude towards paedophiles. Glitter had been roaming the world in virtual anonymity, so we travelled from country to country in his wake, trying to work out what he'd been doing. Along the way, we met convicted paedophiles and their critics. We managed to board Glitter's yacht, locate his home, and uncover fresh information about his behaviour since he left the UK. And then, three weeks ago, Gary Glitter was discovered and arrested in Vietnam and held under suspicion of committing obscene acts with children. So we had to ask ourselves, couldn't more have been done to have stopped our most famous sex offender roaming the world? This is the Gary Glitter we once thought we knew. The self-styled leader of the gang, adored by millions. It was early July. Joel and I were old friends, and we were eager to find out where Glitter had gone so badly wrong, and why he'd disappeared off the radar. Our search had begun here in London, with a phone call to the man we assumed would be the best person to help us, Gary's former manager. I just wanted to try and sound you out as to whether, whether you'd been in contact with him. Um, and you also... will get absolutely no cooperation whatsoever from me. I have nothing to say to you. I'm not interested in your programme, uh, and I'm not going to be helpful. And if you use anything that you haven't cleared the rights that we own, we will sue you. That's the end of the conversation. That's, um, that's quite abrupt. This was going to be more difficult than we'd thought. But it wasn't hard to understand why those who'd been close to Gary Glitter were now reluctant to talk about him. In the past, two cases against him of abusing young girls had been thrown out of court on technicalities. But in 1999, Glitter was convicted for viewing 4,000 images of child sexual abuse on his computer, some of them featuring infants as young as two years old. Glitter served two months in prison, and upon his release, he claimed he was repentant. I deeply regret doing what I was sent to prison for. I've served my time. I want to put it all behind me. I've lived my life. Shortly after this press conference, Glitter fled the country. The leader had asked for forgiveness, but no one was listening. Surely, inevitably, the rest of his life would be destroyed. Or would it? Streets full of people, all alone. Another famous sex offender has taken an entirely different approach to Glitter's, living his life after prison quite openly. Music mogul Jonathan King was once at the top of the charts with Everyone's Gone to the Moon. But now, he's gone on to become Britain's most famous convicted buggerer. But unlike Glitter, after three and a half years in jail, King shows no remorse, and in August told us that a conviction for paedophilia needn't mean the end of your life. I've got a brand new single out, it's called My Love, My Life. I think you should purchase it immediately. Jamie, let me just show you. See those hands? No fucking holes in the palms, mate. I've not been crucified. I know you say you're not, you're not guilty, but it was 14 and 15-year-olds. It was 14 and 15 quads, yeah. So for mo most people's definition, that is paedophilia. That's an well, older, I, older I guy with a younger... Technically, it's not paedophilia, and technically, I'm innocent of it anyway, mm. and actually... No, not technically, not technically you are. You're guilty uh, of it. Yes. And actually, I wouldn't want to go with 14 and 15-year-olds either anyway. Yeah. Because to me... Who do you go for now? I don't go for anyone because I'm now 60 and I'm past the would age ever, of sexual activity. Would you, ever, would, would you ever go for me? No, I'm afraid not, Jamie. How about Joel? 
No, I'm afraid you've, I'm afraid both of you, really. Now, it's only now that I'm 60. When I was younger, I think you're both deeply attractive human beings. Joel's getting rather overexcited now. The camera's sort of going up a bit like that. Jonathan was on fighting form, brimming with gay abandon. I wondered whether Gary Glitter could re-enter society as happily if he were able to return. I think he'd be absolutely fine. I think tabloid world is very different from real world. And, of course, Gary Glitter suffered a lot because of the tabloids. And he, of course, got intimidated by the tabloids having a go at him and, I think, disappeared off to the Far East. Now, of course, that's always a problem. If you give in to the playground bully, then they will constantly be kicking you. You just don't give in to them. As we were about to leave, Jonathan became strangely paranoid about the purpose of the interview. And you agree to an interview thinking this seems like a friendly young fellow and he's going to do something nice and sympathetic and even, dare I say it, possibly positive and supportive. Especially when he meets me and sees how nice I am. And then after a little bit you start realising that he's a snake in wolf's clothing. I, I'm not going to say anything at all. I quite like you. You're very suspicious of me. Oh, well, there you go. So you've heard the words now, I quite like you. What more could you want? <laughs> That's called unqualified praise. Yeah, but, uh, well, in, in, the, in the context, it's in quite context, good, yeah. isn't it? I mean, no-one else likes you. Don't start on me. I'm highly popular. I've got an army of fans. Wow. Appreciative of Jonathan's hospitality, I made full use of the facilities before we left. Jonathan King, effectively a playground bully of the worst kind, was convinced that the only way to survive in the UK as a convicted paedophile was to stand up to the other playground bully, the media. It sounded like for Jonathan the strategy was working, and it made me wonder why Gary Glitter had run away. I decided to confront one of the playground bullies myself. This is Joel. Uh, is that going? Yeah. yeah. Is it? Right, well, go and sit down, you big tossers. Yeah. Kelvin McKenzie, editor of The Sun for over a decade, had done as much as anyone in tabloid world to intimidate paedophiles and characterise them as unforgivable monsters. What would Gary Glitter have to do in order to change your mind? Jump off a bloody car park roof and on the way down say, I'm sorry. Right, I've got to take this call. I was waiting for one call, I'm very sorry. I'm a bit tied up, I thought it was somebody important. Now, fuck off, I'll speak to you later, cheers. I just wanted to check what your view is, what your approach is going to be to Gary when you go back to the sun. Are you going to give him another kicking? I hope so. I, yes, I seriously hope so. There is no redemption as far as I'm concerned. I couldn't give a flying fuck, right, that Gary Glitter can't come back to this, this land. In fact, I'm absolutely delighted that this scumbag is sentenced to some far-off place. At least he's not abusing children or looking at children in our, in our country. What do you feel about the children abroad? I feel very sorry for them. Really? In fact, what I would do with these Don't guys... Don't we have a responsibility put, to bring him back? When I'm about bringing him back, what I do is I think I put an island together where you can put all these bloody paedophiles together and with a bit of luck a big Force 10 gale will come along and kill the lot of them. Kelvin was Glitter's nemesis, but he wasn't the only one. Shortly after Gary's release in the year 2000 and in the wake of Sarah Payne's murder, the News of the World started its name and shame campaign the rest of the British tabloid press followed suit, whipping its readers into an anti-paedophile frenzy. We'll keep on going until they're all out, until we've seen justice. And once we've got justice, then we'll stop. A large number of sex offenders, whose names and addresses were published by the press, were either forced underground or fled the country. The tabloid reaction to paedophiles and the public response seem pretty natural to me. But experts believe it's only making matters worse. We went to meet paedophile counsellor Donald Findlater, who strongly disagrees with the tabloid approach. Is the media helpful to your cause? Largely not. The headlines that go for the paedophile and the pervert and the monster and all that kind of stuff doesn't help the man himself recognise himself that's doing those things. It certainly doesn't help, help his wife or his mum recognise what my son's doing is actually what that's the self-same person doing. So it doesn't help people relate to, what, to, to, to the headlines and to the behaviour, or indeed to feel inclined to get help. The brutal tabloid press was one thing, and as Joel discovered, Nonswatch was another. Joel trawled through dozens of internet vigilante groups who were willing to mete out primitive justice to paedophiles. We were particularly taken by the rock outfit White Law, whose big song was called Fetch the Noose. We wondered whether they were entirely serious. Noose, fetch the noose. 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 Noose, f
Benny, Baz, Michael and Steve met socially in the mid-90s, but have only recently managed to corner the market in anti-paedophile rock. I couldn't endorse their enthusiasm for the noose, but it got me wondering what kind of homecoming they might organise for the leader, should he ever be able to return to the UK. I'd attack him, without an inch of thought. I'd attack him, I'd drag him in here, he'd get what he deserves. I'd push these tables out of the way and I'd run straight at him and I'd, I'd smash him straight through that window. I'd kick his fucking head, I'd kill him. Kill him. In the context, it perhaps wasn't all that surprising that Gary Glitter, released from jail in the year 2000, fled Britain as fast as he could. He tried to enter Cuba, but was instantly deported to Mexico, although, according to the tabloids, not before he'd fathered a Cuban love child. He spent three weeks partying in Colombia, then flew to Gibraltar, jumped on his yacht, and sailed to Sota Grande in Spain, where he almost drowned drunk in the marina wearing a cowboy hat. He parked his yacht and headed back to the UK in 2001. The press hounded him, so he fled to Portugal, Brazil, South Africa, and then Cambodia, where it's remarkably easy to get sex with children. The last thing the Cambodians wanted was another convicted sex offender in their country, and they had him deported to Thailand. But Thailand didn't want Glitter either. Glitter, not to be outdone, sneaked back into Cambodia, bought a house, and set up his new home. By now, it was 2003, and Gary Glitter went to ground. Phnom Penh, capital of Cambodia, and child sex capital of the world. The Cambodian government was making it abundantly clear that it wouldn't tolerate paedophile activity. This was where the repentant Gary Glitter had chosen to settle. To us, it seemed suspicious, and we wanted to know what he'd been up to since arriving. It was the end of the summer, and after a week in the city, Joel had yet to perfect his Khmer language skills. Have you seen him anywhere? No. Um, we discovered that the last TV footage of Glitter in Cambodia had been shot during his first visit in 2001. We met up with the cameraman to take a look at it. Hi, I'm Jamie. There, there's nothing more recent. I think so. There, there, there are no other uh, cameraman uh, got his picture. Ah. Why not? Because uh, he's a smart man. Um, yeah. He, wherever he goes, uh, he has a spy around uh, looking uh, the area. This is, the, I think, the bodyguard of the bank. The, the guard of the bank. And this is Gary Glitter. Get out of his spy and uh, try to kick a uh, photographer. Wow, that's pretty aggressive. Why, do you think he only came into town a couple of times? I think uh, he came often. He cannot just uh, live in a house for a long time. So do you think he's still around now? Uh, I think so. Uh, he's in uh, a big house uh, near uh, the Prime Minister's house. Oh. We've been told where Glitter's house was and we hoped we'd soon find the leader in his bolt hole. Before asking Glitter what possible explanation there could be for choosing to live here, we came across some neighbours and wondered whether they were aware of his presence in their midst. Have you seen this man? He's called the leader. Doesn't, that doesn't make it any clearer. No one seemed to recognise the photos, but then, talking to an old lady, our luck changed. What did she say? She said that um, there's a foreigner living on that house next to a guy named Chen Pon. Yeah, <laughs> that's the ex-minister. Yes. The next door neighbour. The next door neighbour, she said this house is closer by to the river, it's sort of uh, uh, inside. And she said he used to raise a few children there. What do you mean he used to raise a few children? Yeah, raise, you know, look after a few children. His own children? His own children? They said that uh, 
We don't know where these children come from, but this, this thing that is uh, often or often children or something like that. He look after them there. He looks after them. Yeah, that's what they say. Orphan children. I was intrigued. I formed my own gang and headed towards Glitter's house, a unique colonial villa in the most affluent part of town, which Glitter had bought using some of the two million pounds he'd made from selling the rights to his music in 1997. The gatehouse which led to Glitter's residence contained a family who were getting ready for lunch. I was wondering if you had seen this man. So I saw her eye. This man? Like you don't remember? Okay. How about if I... I think this man? Show me that this call, eh? Is she not... She doesn't want to talk. She doesn't want to talk. You know him? Small party? Come on. She's <laughs> hiding. She's not telling anything. Do you know him? No, she said, <laughs> yeah, she said no. no. <laughs> I couldn't tell whether this family was just scared of us for some reason, or whether, perhaps, they were protecting someone. Either way, I took my gang through Glitter's gates and onto his property. <laughs> We were 50 yards from the front door when we were greeted by a friendly young man. This is my gang. And shortly afterwards, hello. by his decidedly unfriendly mother. Ah, hello. This is our gang. This is our gang together. What's wrong? Nobody coming to come into this house. Nobody ah. filming here. We're not allowed here. I want to buy some of his clothes. So he left already. He's left already. Does he, is he in England now? He said, I don't know where he went. He went, I, I don't know. He He's gone. He said, oh, you just come and shoot my uh, filming in here. I will sue you. <laughs> I wasn't sure whether the woman was telling the truth or not, or whether, as Glitter's housekeeper, she was just being loyal. Perhaps Glitter had fled the area because the government's crackdown on sex offenders had taken effect. So was Phnom Penh still a place where international paedophiles could find children for sex? Later that night, posing as tourists with a handicap, we had supper at one of the many restaurants by the river and got a little closer to finding out. To buy sex with children, we'd heard that you didn't have to go far. Many of the bars and restaurants we went into seemed to be magnets for older Western men looking for sex with kids. Here, the staff proved numerous, attentive, and surprisingly young. It wasn't long before Joel and I had been encouraged to dance with the young children. It all seemed perfectly innocent, a bit like a child's birthday party. A young girl called Wan started paying me more attention than the others. All of a sudden, things became a little more frisky. I joked with the staff that Joel preferred boys, but they took me seriously, and Joel was catered for straight away. Noticing how well I was getting on with Wan, the older staff encouraged me to stick around to meet the manager, and I secretly filmed our conversation. You had uh, money, you can buy anything from the Because family uh, one very poor. Mm. Family one money. Wan was ushered over and sat silently whilst the manager offered her to me for life for the price of a cheap motorbike. <laughs> you can buy moto, cuddle uh, for Papa. Papa. As Wan showed me out of the restaurant, I felt sick that it would only be a matter of time before someone took up the manager's offer and bought her. It seemed to me that British tabloid fervor to get rid of paedophiles had succeeded only in exporting the problem to countries like Cambodia, which were less capable of dealing with it. The next morning, we were in Svei Pak, 
once the world's most infamous child sex district, Hello. and a short drive from Gary Glitter's house. Since Glitter's arrival, Sve Pak has been shut down, and the government claims it's now much more difficult to pick up children here. But during a walk through the back streets, a 14-year-old pimp approached me. The pimp led me through a series of dingy alleyways. Eventually, we came across a mother and father who were happy to do business. Within a few moments, I realized that doing business meant trying to sell me their daughter. How about her? It's OK with her? Origin, not open. OK, I understand. You want? How much? What do you think? 500? Eight hundred. Yeah. For how long? Maybe. Up, up, up to you how? You want how day? One month. No. One week. Three days. Three days. Yeah. She's very nice. Two? two? I can have two. How old is she? Thirteen. And how old is she? 13, 13. I can have two. How much? Two. I give you one. Uh, 1600. This is Papa? Yeah. I will call. Thank you very much. Bye. 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 So far, we'd found little evidence that Glitter had come to Phnom Penh for anything other than the scenery. But the few clues we'd managed to scrape together didn't bode well. The Cambodian authorities tried to have him deported amid negative reports about what he'd been doing here. But Glitter had got back in. His neighbours had told us that he'd spent his time looking after children from an orphanage. For a sex offender who claimed to have been full of remorse, to behave in such a way in the child's sex capital of the world rang several alarm bells. Had Glitter really, as he insisted on his release, left his past life behind him? We took our concerns to an organization called Licardo, which monitors child sex abuse in Cambodia. They already had a file on Glitter, and our contact, Jason Barber, opened it for us and showed us a typical tabloid photo of Glitter from the sun. She looks pretty young, doesn't she? She does. How old would you guess that she was? About 13? 12? I mean, because the Cambodian women look quite young sometimes, don't they? But she's definitely Ed. 13 or 12. Ed. Yeah, at oldest. Tell me about um, about Gary Glitter. What do you know? We're aware of uh, some voices within the government calling for him not to be permitted to be here. Um, given the context of Cambodia, where child sexual abuse is very prevalent, where children are available readily for sex, um, given that law enforcement is very weak, Obviously, we're concerned. Well, so the, ideally, he would leave Cambodia. We'd certainly prefer that. Where do you go though after Cambodia? That's up to him. Because um, you know, I'm not sure we want him back in the UK. <laughs> That's up to up to him. Um, Did we want Glitter back in the UK, or was it right to let him become someone else's problem? Perhaps Kelvin McKenzie's idea of a dedicated paedophile island wasn't so bad after all. We carried on searching for clues and managed to find someone in the Cambodian government who'd been keeping tabs on Glitter. No. Hello, Your Excellency. It's Jamie Campbell from the BBC. Uh, can you call me later, please? Yes. What time? Uh, the Minister of Information was a busy man, but he said he might be able to help us out. Oh, uh, OK. While we waited, we had the good fortune to bump into the film legend Jackie Chan at our hotel. Chan's energy was boundless, and he had the annoying habit of running everywhere. I wondered whether he might provide the answer to our quest, and when I finally caught up with him, took a moment to seek his wisdom. Jackie, I just wanted a bit of advice. One big country, you're trying to find one guy, how do you track him down? I was just wondering Who's if... that guy? He used to be a singer in the UK. Do you yeah. remember him? He did, come on, come oh, on. Oh, okay. You know? What? He's He's living in Cambodia, but he was convicted on paedophile charges in the UK. Oh. 
We've come here, we can't find any evidence. I was just wondering if you had any methods. Wanted. Thing. You put a wanted sign up, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. Chan thought we should put up some wanted posters. So we did. Hopefully, they'd yield some results. We had a bit of good news. We managed to track down a man called Yorn, who'd worked as Glitter's chef and security guard. He'd known Glitter personally, and I hoped he'd tell us something about the leader's lifestyle in Cambodia. Um, thank you for your time. What was his reason for being in Phnom Penh? Uh, no. He said, uh, I don't know what he's doing in Phnom Penh, but when he lived in his house, he sang karaoke. He sings songs? But he said he only sang a song in English. His picture appeared on the screen and he sang along. Did he ever have any children around the house? He said the first time there was some uh, young girl was there. He said that uh, I was not happy for, for, for Gary to have a girl like that in the house because it's not very nice. I'm not yeah. with a lot of respected uh, statues inside. Yorn explained to us that Gary Glitter's activity with the young girls was an insult to the sacred statues in the house. What were they doing around the statues? Suddenly, Yorn clammed up and didn't want to answer any more questions okay. about his former employer. With our time in Cambodia running out, we had a call from the Minister of Information. There was a break in his schedule, and he was prepared to see us straight away. We raced across town to meet His Excellency, whose nickname was KK. He told us on the phone that he would be able to clear up the matter of where Glitter was, once and for all. KK's offices had a distinctly colonial feel to them, and KK himself was guarded by a slightly mangy dog. Can we go in? Yeah. Thank you very much. Hello, Your Excellency. Jamie Campbell from the BBC. This is Joel. I was wondering if you could tell me, because you're the Minister of Information, if you could give me <laughs> the information about what happened when this guy came to the country. I think he left already. He came back again once, and after that, we asked him to leave. Ah, so he yes. came. How did it? But you asked him to leave, and he left the country, and then he yeah. came back. Yeah. yeah. The, the police told me that he's leaving. What? He's already left? I'm not sure. I have to call the police. But as Can we give the police a call and find out? Can we do that now? Yeah. Can you call the police and find out? I can call. Because if he's not in the country, yeah. why are we here? <laughs> Despite his willingness to help us, I couldn't help feeling that the minister had lost control of the glitter situation. He was receiving conflicting reports over his phone, but eventually came up with what he said was solid information. He's still in the country. Uh, I heard that he was leaving, but now the police say that he's still here. Yeah. If I'm going to track him down, if he's uh, still in the country, how uh, will I do it? How should I do it? He stay with some NGO. He's staying with an NGO? Yeah, yeah. Glitter is staying with an NGO? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> this is fantastic information. Another call to a woman general in the Cambodian army revealed some startling information. It appeared that Glitter had used a false identity to get close to children. She explained to me that uh, she get email from England telling, uh, telling her that the doctor is not, is not a, a doctor and he might have some uh, sto history, past history. Of he's not a what? A doctor? He's not. He was not. Wait, was he saying he was a doctor? He's saying he's a doctor. Gary Glitter said he was a doctor? Yeah. What, in order to get into that NGO's house? I don't know. He just he take care of the children, say that thing. That's a little bit odd, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> ah. You know the old woman who said he's, he looks after children? Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. remember? Yes. So she was right. But that's his house? Yeah. And do you think he's there, Your Excellency? I don't know. Maybe because uh, the, the, the lady, she, she told me that he's still, he might be still there. So I like to make sure A final call secured the whereabouts of the orphanage Glitter had visited and also a police escort to take us there. A major will yeah, go with us? Yeah. One major? One major. That's fantastic protection. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Hello, Major. I'm Jamie. 
Good to meet you. Are you the Major? Yeah. Thanks for uh, helping us out. Twenty minutes later, we arrived at the Lighthouse Foundation, a charity which aims to raise and protect orphan Indian. children. It turned out that the police major who accompanied us was not just a bodyguard. He was in charge of the Gary Glitter case, and he'd already established that Glitter had visited on a number of occasions. As yet, though, Glitter's purpose in going there was unclear. Jatil? Jatil, the man in charge of the orphanage, was extremely nervous at the presence of the major, and his English took a moment or two to warm up. For some reason, Gary Glitter came to live here for a bit? No, it's, it's wrong. It's not a staff come here, you know, just a visitor, you know. Just visited? Uh, visitors. Three, one, one month, you know, four weeks. In you know, one week, three days, two days. He, he came for two days? Yes, yeah, for one week. He was staying week. here? No, stay here. He just come in what the morning or sometime in the evening. Why was he coming? He come, you know, for the see a fun game, you know. For, ga for games? For, for, for the fun game, just look around with a uh, furniture here. Right. Yeah. Did he give some money then for the orphanage? Sure. Around uh, 600, you know, 600 dollar. He gave some money? He gave some money. What was he like when you met him? Uh, he just, you know, so like just, you know, yeah. we get the ball, you know, a garden there. Yeah. And just want the, you know. So he was playing games with the children? He just played a bit of, bit of bubble, you know, with a ball. Football, something, and uh, play some guitar on the mat here. Was he singing? Yeah, yeah, singing. Everywhere. He, what what songs was he singing? Mm, just uh, like a romantic song. He's very good at playing guitar, you know. Ah. Yeah. He, that they guy. They came and did a show. Yeah, he came to the show. He play some guitar, you know, dancing with the opera. When did he come here? This year? No, last year. Do you think it's a bit odd that he's a convicted paedophile in the UK? And that he's coming to an orphanage of young kids. Oh, you hear that? Yeah. He's oh. a, in the UK, he's a convicted paedophile. Oh, I don't know, but. You know, I'm sorry to hear that about him, you know. I felt sorry for the owner of the orphanage, who hadn't realized that the man who'd sung romantic songs to the children in his care was not, in fact, a doctor, but a convicted paedophile. I wanted to see if the Major would give me any more information. He was now unwilling to have his face shown, but he did agree to talk. So, where is he now? He doesn't even know where is he now. Cambodia? Don't know. He don't know. We don't know. What chances do I have of finding him? He said, uh, you probably be able to find him better than us because you probably have a better source. Hmm. I was amazed that the Major had admitted to me that he'd lost his grip on the investigation into Glitter and that Glitter was now, effectively, missing. More than ever, it seemed like Glitter had to be found. The Major thought I'd have a better chance of tracking him down than him. I hoped he was right, but I wasn't sure. We returned to the UK, concerned that Glitter had left Cambodia and was now somewhere else, possibly up to no good. After all I'd found out, I wondered whether anybody was concerned enough to track Glitter and keep an eye on what he was doing. Interpol, bonjour. Uh, hello, is that Interpol? Yes, you're absolutely right. Ah, hello. Do you speak English? Yes, I do. What can I help you? Oh, hi. We're trying to work out whether, you know, once you've committed a sex offence in the UK, you can just go wherever you want in the world and no one really cares about it. Or whether, you know, you do have that information on record. I don't, I'm not all that interested in in the specifics, I just want to know whether you do have it or not. Um, unfortunately, we can't give out any details on any individuals or cases at all, I'm afraid. Interpol might have been on top of the glitter case. They might not. They wouldn't tell us. But what we did discover was that in Britain, law enforcement agencies have been working hard to tackle the root of glitter's problem. Since his conviction, police forces have increasingly cooperated worldwide to arrest internet paedophiles. Over 7,000 UK citizens use their credit cards to buy images from this website in America. As a result, there were raids across the country as the British police acted on information provided by the Americans and hundreds of arrests ensued. The most high profile was rock musician Pete Townsend and inevitably Glitter found his name back in the headlines. 
I had a look myself on the net and found that using a few specific keywords provided by an expert consultant, I could access a number of child porn sites immediately. So what was now in place to prevent Glitter committing online sex offences again? We went to see Jim Gamble, Deputy Director of the National Crime Squad, the lead agency in tackling internet pornography. Gamble couldn't talk specifically about Glitter, but he did show us Operation PIN, designed to catch out internet paedophiles. You then will click on whatever it is, and you're given a warning on this page by entering the site, you accept that you'll see explicit images of young children, uh -huh. and you click and you enter. What you get instead of the images, and several of the pages are cut out on this site, is this. This is an international law enforcement initiative. Uh, it identifies what your IP address is, uh, and note there that your preference was for pretty boys. Please view the self-help advice that follows this page. And then finally, to a page which says, people who have been identified from the site may feel that they'd like support and someone to talk to. In the six years since Glitter's conviction, the police had become much more sophisticated in trapping offenders, and there was also an increased awareness that they were sick and in need of professional help. Our message, and our simple message to people is this, if you're at home, if you have these inappropriate feelings towards children, for God's sake, seek help. For goodness sake, go to a doctor, go to a counsellor, speak to someone, get help. We don't want to see anyone, you know, brutalised. We don't want to see anyone killing themselves. We don't want to be levelling allegations against people in these circumstances. Are you saying that there is a way back? What I'm saying is, don't seek out these images, seek out help. The official line from the British police is that people like Gary Glitter should get help. But how is it going to work practically with Glitter? He wasn't even in the country. There was a time when he could walk the streets without fear of the mob. And now, perhaps it was time for us to work out whether there were any clues as to what had led to Gary Glitter's deviant behaviour in the first place. I, I was in a children's home for a while, which was terrible. It was Dickensian. It was awful. Um, you know, without going into a, a whole long detail of what we used to have to do, right? Well, let's go into a long detail of what we had to do. I used to get up at five o'clock in the morning, light all the fires, do all the potatoes, you know, clean all their shoes and things like this. I was 11 years of age, so I wanted to get out of that. Graham, Hello. I'm Jamie. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Come on through. This is Joel. We found a psychotherapist called Graham Bott, a lifelong fan who'd known Glitter personally. Graham had been studying Glitter's case in great detail and had come up with an analysis of why he was so hungry for success. He had a difficult childhood. I assume that's what he was doing at 14, was trying to escape his bad childhood by, by trying to make records to become famous, to finally get the adulation that he so craved. You know, when you hear an, an audience applaud somebody, it's, it's, to the person performing, it's like the love that they didn't have. Graham had spent enough time with Glitter to see the man behind the showbiz persona. He was surrounded by everything he possibly could want, but inside, very lonely. I mean, you could see it. You could see that he, he, he wasn't a happy man. He wasn't happy, and I, I don't think the fame really has ever made him a happy man. I was working in late one night when my eyes beheld an eerie sight for my monster from the side. Let his difficult childhood produce many demons, he was a self-confessed slave to drugs and alcohol, and years of his career were written off because he was so unhealthy. At that point, it was the lowest moment, and I went on a 48-hour binge, and I woke up on the floor, and for about 10 days, I couldn't move off the floor. It was almost like a, an act of God. It just I was absolutely stuck on that floor, and I felt like I'd been raped. Or, or like I'd been abused, you know, and I had, of course, I'd raped myself, I'd abused myself so badly. All I wanted to do was to get in a shower and wash. Glitter regularly faced up to his faults in public and fought hard to overcome his addictions. I stopped drinking completely. It's fantastic. I've done a year and a half without drinking. I go five miles running every day. And it's, you know, fitness is, is an incredible buzz. On many occasions in the past, Gary Glitter had managed to pull himself back from the dead. Perhaps, with the right professional help, he could do it again. We returned to counsellor Donald Finlater to ask him whether Glitter could ever change. I believe that all of us um, can achieve a good life and a wholesome life and an enjoyable life 
that causes no harm to any other human being, whether adult or child, I'd like him to acknowledge that and actually say, I'd like to grasp hold of an opportunity to develop a good life uh, with good relationships and that, frankly, facing the demons of my past are part of what I need to do and there's organisations like my own, but of course other organisations too, that will help people do that, that won't collude, that will be tough talking, of course, but will help people take stock and develop a life that, that hopefully is mutually satisfying to them and their friends and their families and the people they choose to in an adult world journey with. So it is possible? It is entirely possible. The police and the medical experts agreed. Glitter should seek help, and the best place for that was back in the UK. But how would the public respond to that prospect? Do you think he should be allowed to come back and get on with his wife? No. No? Yeah. What would you do to him? If I had the chance? If you had the chance. Would he cut his balls off? Cut his balls off. <laughs> yeah. Has he done his time, Harry? He has done his time, yeah. Right, yeah, he, he should, should be allowed to do them. Should be allowed? Aye. Then he should be allowed to get on with your life, shouldn't he? Do you recognise this guy? Yes. What, yeah. what would you do to him? Would you, well, he's missing. I'd bugger him, mate. Bugger him? Yeah. I wouldn't let him babysit my children. No. Right. So what no. do you know about Gary? He's a paedophile. He's second hand <laughs> glitter. And right. he, he, he like... He's a man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Would, you feel, would, you, would you feel comfortable with him if he no, came and had really. a cup of tea? No. 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 I'd talk to him. So if he tried to kiss you? No. 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 Red no. 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 yeah. How many people want him to come back? No. I don't. <laughs> Can you do a kind of message into the camera? You want to be in my game, my game, my game. You want to be in my game. Getting a gaggle of teenage girls to sing some of Glitter's songs wasn't difficult. But finding Glitter and persuading him to return to the UK for rehabilitation was, particularly since we had no idea where he might be. We hopped on a plane to Italy, having been tipped off that a well-connected maverick lawyer in Rome might help us track Glitter down. His name was Giovanni Di Stefano, and on his client list were, amongst others, Saddam Hussein, Slobodan Milosevic, Nicholas Van Hoogstraten and Jonathan King. If anyone had the power to put us in touch with a man like Glitter, surely it was Giovanni. Ciao. Hello. Hello, I'm Jamie. Hi, I'm Miliana. Please Miliana, come in. this is Joel. Hello. Hello there. I mean, have you actually met Gary Glitter? No, we don't Why know where not? he is. No one knows where he is. Do you know where he is? Well, he's not my client. I mean, why should I know? Uh, but, I mean, it won't be difficult to find out. Uh, uh, That's why we're coming to see you, because you're going to help us track him down. Well, I might do that, yeah. I mean, I don't see why not. It can't cause, it can't do any harm, can it? Shall we go for a drink then? Yeah. Come on. I mean, who cares? About glitter? Yeah, who cares? The man was a rock star. I presume he's paid his taxes. He's committed a criminal offence. He has paid the penalty for that criminal offence. Why do you want to badger him for? Oh, we don't want to badger him. But well, what do you want? I mean, you want... We want to find out whether it's possible for him to come back to the UK and be integrated back into UK society. I think, now, that is an admirable... Uh, 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 now, I don't know whether it's for the television station to do that or if it should be for psychologists, psychiatrists or social workers, probation officers. Call them whatever the hell you want to call them. When I'd called Giovanni from the UK, he'd hinted that he knew Glitter's precise whereabouts and I was hoping to wheedle the information out of him over a few drinks. Well, the thing is that he's been out of the country for a number of years. Some would say good. Yeah. Is it possible for him to be reintegrated into UK society? There's no reason why anyone shouldn't be reintegrated into society, and more important, it is an obligation of the state to integrate all United Kingdom citizens into society. If you can redeem a mortgage, you can certainly damn well redeem a man. Yeah. Um, I've done some small verifications <laughs> since you called last night. He is not in Cambodia. He's not? He's not in Cambodia. How did you find that out? He's not in Cambodia. Do you know where he is? He is, not, he is not in Cambodia. Do you know where he is? He is not in Cambodia. Giovanni, no, but come on, because we have we've been looking around everywhere. We can't find him. That's a matter for you, isn't it? Not a matter for me. I'm not a private detective, nor am I commissioned by the BBC to find missing persons. He's not even missing. Will he? I oh, know. 
Well, he is missing because we can't find him. Who the hell is he? If we turn the camera off, will you tell me who, where he is? No. Do you know where he is? I do. But only out of natural curiosity. <laughs> you don't know where he is, do you? Don't you know. don't know where he is. I don't know where he is then. Let's keep it at that. I don't know where he is. He's not in Cambodia. He's in Spain. Is he? Yeah. Come on. I've got to go. I'm sorry, I've got to go. What's your source? I'm a man that represents Saddam Hussein and Milosevic. How can you ask me my source? What a stupid question. It's a bit unlikely that he's in Spain, though, if, because wouldn't the press in Spain have got him? Who okay. You are giving a man too much importance. Have you noticed that the press leave Jonathan King alone? Technically speaking, King has committed far more, technically speaking, far more serious offences. Than Glitter? Yeah. What, and the press are leaving him alone? Of course they leave him alone, so yeah. Glitter would be, it'd be easy for him to come back. Depends who represents him. Yeah. If he did ever say, listen, I, need, I do need representation, can't find anyone for the job. Yeah, but what representation can I give him? He's not charged with anything. I am not a literary agent or a PR man. I'm not. I'm a fucking criminal lawyer. We caught the next flight to Spain. Having failed to locate Glitter in Cambodia, we were now faced with another huge country with few clues as to where he might be in it. But we knew that Glitter had once moored his yacht, the Voyageur, in the marina at Soto Grande. And that's where we picked up our trail. No one would tell us if the yacht was still here, and mentioning Glitter's name just seemed to make matters worse. The owner of this shop immediately called the police. So we had to go hunting in the marina ourselves, checking the names on hundreds of boats. Hola. Hey. We're looking for a boat called Voyageur. Is that Hello. Yeah? I think it's that one there, isn't it? It's, um, I think this is it. Jump. Has it but been there for a while? Here for three years almost, I think. Really? Three years abandoned, you know what I mean? Abandoned? Yes, nobody keep the care of any of So you think I can just hop on and have a look? Is it okay? No, no, no. Yes, yes. To have you, a look outside? You can jump, yeah, jump and have a look outside. With the leader nowhere to be seen, we thought he wouldn't begrudge us a few hours of respite aboard his pleasure boat. The voyageur had long since been abandoned, but it wasn't difficult to imagine Gary frolicking here, staggering drunkenly around and almost drowning in the marina wearing a cowboy hat. We went to see Max Clifford, the public relations guru, who was on holiday in the area. Max had a reputation for representing the most notorious of clients, including O.J. Simpson and Simon Cowell. Maybe Max could come up with a strategy to help Glitter if we ever had the opportunity to get him back to the UK. Welcome to... Uh, this is Joel. Welcome to Las Alamandas. Is this yours? This is... Uh, well, a small part of it is mine. This apartment up here is mine. And I've had it now for nearly five years. Hi. Yes, so Carrie, isn't it? This is Carrie. This is I'm Jamie. This is Carrie. Hi, Hi there. Yeah. Good to meet you. Is, this is Dave, her better half. Hi, Dave. A long way. Hi, good to meet you. You haven't seen um, Gary Glitter, have you? We're looking for Glitter. It's Max in disguise. Get the wig off. That's all I need. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, we've not seen him. Why don't no. you play Nine and Seek again? Is he paying you to do his PR? Is that it? You, um, have you been I, by I, haven't, I still haven't found Gary. All oh, right. What about the lawyer? This, uh, this lawyer that's. Uh, the Giovanni name? de Stefano? Yeah. Giovanni? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, he thinks that Glitter might be in Spain. Uh, Would you, if, he, if he paid you enough, wouldn't you represent him? If he paid me £10 million, I wouldn't represent him. Wouldn't you? No. Most stars are totally selfish. So, no matter what Gary Glitter said, my instinct would be there's only one person that really matters, there's only one person he cares about, there's only one person he really feels sorry for, and that's himself. <coughs> Here. You okay? That's a flight, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was. Went straight in. <coughs> Left action replay. 
Here, let's get some water. No flies on me, it's fine. <laughs> I think the fly just went straight in. <coughs> Shall I get you some more water, Matt? Oh, oh, right. You sure? <coughs> There's... There's some... Oh, you've got your tea. If you were to give Glitter some hypothetical advice, you know, a PR strategy, what would, uh, what would it be? Uh, is he's got to be seen to be um, full of remorse. He's got to put his hands up, he's got to say, I'm ashamed of what happened, of what I did, of what I became. Um, I've been having treatment, uh, and obviously that would have to be authenticated, you know, the psychiatrists, the doctors. If he was able to convince people over a period of time, um, then potentially he could restart his career, just maybe. Clifford wasn't keen to do the job himself, <laughs> but he'd given us an insight into how Gary Glitter might, in the right circumstances and with the right strategy, become palatable to the British public once more. So where was Gary Glitter? It didn't seem likely he'd be sunbathing on any of these delightful beaches in southern Spain, but we had a look anyway. speak English? Have you seen him? You haven't seen it. Our mission to bring Gary home to get help had failed. He was out there, somewhere, but for the time being he'd given us and everyone else the slip. This is one glitter performance that's never been seen by the public. It shows him singing at the wedding of Tessa Dahl, Roald Dahl's daughter. Tessa was reported by the papers to have been Glitter's lover and had lived with him when her daughter, supermodel Sophie, was very young. Tessa had been on good terms with Glitter right up until he was sent to prison and when she finally agreed to meet us, I wanted to know whether she could ever countenance his return. Everyone has told me this is a really bad idea. Really? Mm. Why? Um, because it's a sordid subject. But actually, although you wouldn't necessarily want to humanise someone that's been convicted of this sort of crime, the person that you met originally was a human who you liked very much. Oh, that's yeah, true, yeah, isn't absolutely. it? Absolutely. Yeah, I loved him. And still, if I see him on television and remind myself of the essence of him, um, I still remember how much I loved him. But you. It's terribly hard to love a person who's behaved as he has, and it's also terribly hard to love someone who's lied, who's lived a lie with you for years and years and years and years. What, you felt that he was living a lie even when you knew him? Well, he must have been. You know, it's, it's almost like having been friends with a murderer. It really is. And if you, you know, you can't believe that, that someone has that aspect of their personality when they they appear to be so genuinely kind, which has to really prove that he's got the most terrible, terrible disease. So did you ever leave him alone with No, Sophie? never. She was never, ever alone with him. Were you worried about that for a bit? No. I wasn't. If Joel was committed to paediophiliac, that's my new word, act, would you still be his friend? I would hope that I would be his friend. Why? Because what you're saying is that once someone does someone like that, something like that, they become completely inhuman. No, I just don't think that unless they show that they're willing to get better, then But that's if he did, I agree. If he continued doing it, then I would really have to ask myself some questions. Well, and that's the but, point. He's but, but, not staying in England if he was staying in England where people were really, really cared about him. You think going to Cambodia is basically just an indication of how guilty he yes, is? Yes, and I think he'd much rather go somewhere and act out than be here. There's no one in Cambodia looking at his internet. Well, you're a friend of his. Why don't you try and help? I'm not powerful enough to help him. You know, he can only help himself. Not even Tessa Dahl, one of Glitter's closest friends, could do anything for him. So who was left to help us help Gary Glitter? 
After all we'd discovered over the past six months, we were sure that Gary Glitter needed to come home and get help. And now, finally, we'd found a way of contacting him. Glitter's manager, who'd previously refused to cooperate with us, now admitted he was in touch with Glitter. I, I, I will probably sit with you and have a coffee, providing you guarantee my name is not mentioned in the programme. OK. We sped through Soho, the heart of the entertainment business, to drop off a video to him in a last-ditch attempt to reach Glitter. The video contained clips from our journey and a plea to Gary Glitter to come home and get help. What did he say? Well, he watched the tape with me, quite liked the tape, and he took it and said that he's going to try and get it to Glitter. I don't know how. I think by some sort of middleman. So did he know where Glitter is? Well... He appears to know where Glitter is. He said that Glitter is always on the move. Doesn't stay in the same place for more than a couple of days. Apparently he's terrified that someone's going to find him. What's he doing? So, well, he said that um, Glitter's sober for only a couple of hours every day. It's quite a depressing picture that he painted. Anyway, but he did take the tape. And uh, hopefully he'll pass it on to Glitter. Unfortunately, we didn't get there in time. The 70s rock star Gary Glitter has been accused of having sex with a 12-year-old girl in Vietnam. The 61-year-old, whose real name Glitter is Glitter, has been arrested at an airport in Vietnam as he tried to board a flight. Stage, we understand that Gary Glitter is still being held inside a prison in Vong Say Glitter has denied having sex with local girls as young as 12. Right, and he came to Vietnam from Cambodia. Given that Vietnam does share a border with Cambodia, I'd say that's very likely. I don't, I don't think he's been here that long. We never found out whether Gary Glitter received our tape. And now, he's going to be held in Vietnamese jail, probably for months. If found guilty, he faces the possibility of death by firing squad. Regardless of whether Glitter is guilty or not, our attempts to get to him had come too late and it seemed that he himself just hadn't been able to reach out for help. Yeah.